dear friends welcome to the cornea essential series today as the sixth part of the series will cover the topic of viral keratoconjunctivitis so the scope of this talk would be under the following headings first we'll deal with adenoviral conjunctivitis also called as epidemic keratoconjunctivitis then we'll see herpes simplex varicella zoster and touch upon the recent covid-19 kind of conjunctivitis so coming to adenoviral conjunctivitis it is documented that there are nearly 65 genotypes of adenovirus that can cause this conjunctivitis starting from a to f and these constitute 90% of all the viral infections that are there in the eye usually this kind of disease is self limiting in most of the cases it resolves by itself in one week in some cases it may prolong till 3 weeks cold compresses and artificial tears does the job in most of the cases however though it is a self limiting disease because of its nature it causes a significant morbidity worldwide leading to economic burden so there is absolutely no role of antibiotics in cases of adenoviral conjunctivitis povidine iodine have been used in some studies povidine iodine has been proven to reduce the duration of conjunctivitis but it does not have any effect on the uh, complications that occur later steroids also have to be avoided in this disease because steroids will prolong the viral shedding however you can start steroids when you see a membrane in that case you can start steroids so the next question is all all the adenoviruses the same obviously no so if you can see these two pictures adolf hitler and mahatma gandhi both of them were homo sapiens both of them were from the same era however both of them were great leaders but the way they impacted the world is totally different so the virulence of any organism depends upon three things that is the virulence of the strain itself as we see saw in the previous slides in this different genotypes of adenovirus uh, the subtype d has more propensity to have membranes in the same way the second point is virus host interaction that is how the host's body reacts to the virus and the third one is the environmental factors that affect the virulence so coming to virulence if you see the structure of a virus the green things that you see here are the penton base the blue things are the hexon and the things that are protruding out are the fibers so these fibers and type of fibers are the main source of virulence so as these attach to the cornea or conjunctiva especially d type fibers are very notorious so usually in the infection phase uh, it is limited to the first 7 days of the disease and the inflammation phase which we see starts after 7 days so it is only after 7 days that you likely to start see the pneumular keratitis or sub epithelial keratitis in us there is something called as the adeno probe it is similar to our cart test that you do in your pregnancy test so it is a very cheap test that's available for 10 dollars and it has a very high specificity of 90% and within 10 minutes you get the result whether the conjunctivitis is caused by adenovirus or not so next coming to the inflammatory phase of the disease this is the most bothersome part that all of us deal with on a day to day basis so here there is definitely role for steroids 
start off with lotiprednol and if it doesn't respond then you go into prednisolone and once again it responds to prednisolone make sure you come back to lotiprednol again and never taper these steroids in adenoviral conjunctivitis abruptly taper it over a period of at least 4 to 6 weeks tacrolimus eye ointment in this condition works very well in our experience we had a study comparing lotiprednol eye ointment and tacrolimus eye ointment for numular keratitis in a case of in a series of 100 cases and both of them were equally effective cyclosporin also is documented to have good evidence against numular keratitis however our experience with this drug is limited so next apart from what we have covered so far i would like to bring to your notice some important preferred practice patterns that aao 2018 has recommended regarding conjunctivitis so let us see each one of them first is whenever you see a case of chronic or recalcitrant conjunctivitis always have a high degree of suspicion for malignancy so this could be a sebaceous or squamous cell carcinoma that is hiding beneath next if you see something like oomp graft versus host disease gonococci or chlamydia so all these things also which are systemically associated can be present and can mimic conjunctivitis and whenever you diagnose superior limbal conjunctivitis check for a thyroid disorder so early detection of conjunctivitis associated of with neoplasms could be life saving in cases so next coming to hsv keratitis we'll deal it anatomical layer wise First one is the epithelium that is called as HSV epithelial keratitis. It could be in a dendritic form or geographic form. Next you have the stromal keratitis. So the stromal keratitis again can be with ulceration which is called as necrotizing, without ulceration which is called as non-necrotizing. And the endothelial part is called as endothelial keratitis and the common manifestation is disciform keratitis. So first look at the HSV epithelial keratitis. So usually epithelial keratitis, primary disease occurs like a blepharoconjunctivitis with minimal corneal involvement. It is mostly in the recurrent cases that you start seeing the epithelial keratitis in form of a dendrite. So this is the latest infection in the trigeminal ganglion that has reactivated. So whenever you see an epithelial lesion, it is nothing but an active replicating virus and it is in its infectious phase. And these multiple arborizing dendritic epithelial cells with terminal buds are pathognomic of a dendritic ulcer. And when these coalesce together, they form a geographic ulcer which is seen below. So you can clearly note the double staining pattern. In the center, it is stained with fluorescein and the peripheries are stained with rose bengal. So how do you differentiate this dendrite from other dendrites? If you see in varicella joster, this is more of an epithelial dendrite with a stuck-on appearance. It doesn't have that central... Uh, uh, ulceration with the terminal bulbs so there is no it doesn't take up staining at all and you may ask me why it is so difficult to differentiate usually herpes joster is accompanied with skin lesions but all of us have to be aware that there is a condition called as joster sign herpetae means you can have hzv keratitis with absolutely no skin lesions involved so that is why you have to differentiate between a varicella joster dendrite and a HSV dendrite. And also, as we have already spoken in our microbial keratitis class, early fungal can mimic a dendrite, what you can see here. Okay, so whenever you are in doubt, do the scraping and debridement. Even if it is a viral dendrite, you are doing no harm, you are reducing the virus load. So always scrape and debride whenever in doubt. 
and also your suspicion should go up whenever this hsv epithelial keratitis is not responding to your treatment for a period of 2 weeks that is you are giving an ointment 5 times a day for 2 weeks still the dendrite is there there's definitely something wrong that is going on so coming to the treatment part hsv epithelial keratitis again to some extent is a self healing thing Uh, so what happens is if you put some antivirals like exciclovir or gancyclovir ointment five times a day for two weeks, it will help you to reduce the duration of the disease. So uh, we strongly recommend not to use these drugs over a period of two weeks because this can lead to corneal toxicity. Apart from this, you can add a prophylactic dose of oral exciclovir 400 mg BD. or topical antiviral hs to prevent epithelial recurrence debridement definitely has a role and a definite no no for epithelial keratitis is never never use steroids so next go to stromal keratitis now in stromal you have two forms one is the necrotizing form and the second is the non necrotizing form so how do you differentiate in a necrotizing form you have an epithelial defect with stromal melting and you can see ulceration so here the activity is both viral infection plus immune mediated destruction so here you have to give therapeutic levels of antiviral systemically along with steroids so when i mean therapeutic level of antivirals it has to be 400 mg or 800 mg of acyclovir five times a day and in non necrotizing it is a purely an immune related disease it's the host response that we are seeing and it usually has vascularization here there is no role for systemic antiviral in therapeutic doses but you can however continue to give it in prophylactic doses that is 400 mg bd uh, you can continue and you can the mainstay of therapy would be steroids in non necrotizing hsv stromal keratitis next let us see endothelitis endothelitis again you have two kinds one is the uh, disky form so disky form is the what you are seeing here in the above picture next you have diffuse or linear endothelitis so in this case again there is a role for topical steroids and prophylactic dosage of antivirals so always be careful whenever you see endothelitis make sure you check for the iop because sometimes trabeculitis which is underlying in these cases can cause an iop rise and you have to manage by giving them anti glaucoma medication and once the inflammation is down obviously the iop will also come down so what are the reactivation triggers for hsv so if you see these are the six possible reasons why a hsv can recur especially the stromal or endothelial disease can recur the most important factor is stress the second one is exposure to sun or uv light especially uv light exposure in our setting is when we tend to do cross linking without taking a proper history in such cases also the viral infection reactivates whenever your immune level goes down like in fever and whenever there is a trauma to the body it could be an injury or a surgery whenever its menstruations and there are certain medications that reduce your immunity so these are all the things and when you ask this questions um, 90% of the time the patient agrees and here the importance is you have to counsel them that hsv is not going to just vanish away overnight the patient is going to have reactivations and more likely to have reactivations in these conditions so they are prepared so whenever they undergo these conditions they know that it's going to be reactivated they come back to you and they take a tapering or regimen of steroids and get back to normal so this time you have to take and counsel them that this is going to be a chronic problem finally how do you differentiate hsv and hzv and should we differentiate at all so as yes, it is very important and relevant obviously if there are skin lesions it's very easy and always remember that hsv is associated more with immunosuppression and diabetics 
Epithelial disease is easier to differentiate because you know that we have already discussed. Especially in HZV, there is definitely no role of antivirals. Simple debridement will do. Stromal and endothelial, it is difficult to differentiate. Serological test can be done. But whenever you are seeing a case that is having more of chronic nature, some neurotrophic element involved, it is more likely to be varicella zoster. And whenever you want to err on the side, always err towards varicella zoster. Without doubt in the mind, give the therapeutic dosage for zoster. That is 800 mg acyclovir five times a day for one month at least. So next, what is more relevant in today's scenario is what we are seeing is COVID-19 conjunctivitis. I think this is a very, very rare phenomena. If you see the recent literature, there is nothing really substantial. There are very vague reports that the patients who are terminally ill with COVID-19 can have some form of mild follicular conjunctivitis. But the most important thing will be they will have fever and other respiratory symptoms and also there will be loss of smell and taste in these cases. And above this, they should definitely have a travel history or a contact history with COVID-19 patients. So it is advised that whenever we are seeing conjunctivitis cases in these days, PPE should be a must. Try to avoid slit lamp examination as much as possible. And if you have an opportunity, have a dedicated isolated hot room for this disease and also keep your uh, medications like artificial tears or antibiotics pre-packed so that you reduce the cross-contamination when these people go to the pharmacy. So just to wrap up, uh, for epithelial keratitis, uh, the basic treatment would be antivirals, that is for five times a day for two weeks. If it is stromal with ulceration, you go with tropical, sorry, topical steroid with therapeutic doses of antiviral, that is 400 mg five times a day. If it is not having ulceration, topical steroid plus prophylactic dosage of oral viral, that is 400 mg BD. In form of endothelial, it is similar to stromal keratitis without ulceration. And these are all the antiviral drugs you have. Acyclovir is 400 mg three to four times a day. That is the treatment dose. 400 mg BD is the prophylactic dose. So if you have valcyclovir, 500 mg three times a day is the therapeutic dose. 500 mg OD is the prophylactic dose. So valcyclovir is very expensive when you compare to acyclovir. That is the reason we give acyclovir in most of the cases. In India, we don't have trifluoridine, but we have acyclovir that is ointment that is five times a day for two weeks and gancyclovir also is again same but in our experience gancyclovir which is in gel form works better for surface toxicity when compared to acyclovir so thank you all of you stay safe